With practice and qualifying in the books from Kansas, Brian and I are in to get you set for the Hollywood Casino 400. We'll build some DraftKings lineups. We'll go through the player pool, give you thoughts on all of our favorite targets and the guys to avoid. We'll also look at the updated betting odds. Where is the value at this point? Is there value? Uh, Brian and I will score uh, scour. That's the word I'm looking for. Scour through the odds to find the value. As always, make sure you are subscribed to our Substack, aoppodcast.substack.com. I will link that in the description. With that being said, let's get started. Ross Chastain used the wall all the way around this racetrack. Logano has been the class of the field. Check out the big brain on red. Yeah, I need to change my underwear. Brian Twining. Round two of the NASCAR playoffs gets started today when you're watching uh we're recording this late saturday night but we got our notes up we got our odds up we got our um sims up we got everything ready to rock we're gonna talk some DraftKings. we're gonna talk some updated betting cards all that good stuff but before we get into all that how the hell are you i'm doing good my friend i am ecstatic for kansas uh we got to see an incredible race back in the spring although it was soured by the fact that martin truex jr who was looking well in line to get a victory got that taken away from him because one kfb decided to self-spin and still miraculously come home with a top 10 during that race and i after re-watching it this week i remember it popped the memories started flushing through my brain about how I had a Kyle Bush top 10, yeah. but I also had Martin Truex Jr. on an outright. So obviously yeah. I got the cash, the Bush play, but I would have much preferred him not to freaking spin and then cash Martin Truex Jr. to win. That being said, uh, I don't think this race is going to play out the same way. I, I think there's going to be some different guys up, up front, a lot of different cars contending for the win. Um, you know, it, it's going to be exciting looking at DFS because we got some major surprises during qualifying. And yeah, no, I'm looking forward to this weekend. Yep, uh, I agree. Let me present my screen and we can just run through prices. We can hit on some notes from qualifying, from practice, talk about stuff we saw, uh, stuff that we got excited about. Um, Interesting results, to say the least. Kyle Larson, not even getting into the final round of qualifying, will be starting 11th at 11.5. Denny Hamlin will be starting 8th at 11K. Red Dog will be starting 4th at 10.5. Christopher Bell will be starting 1st for 10.3. And Chase Elliott will be going to a new engine um, and starting 38th, which at 10K is pricey. But given where he's starting, our expectations, with a new engine, hopefully it's fixed. Um... At least he's not like, oh, I qualified 13th and now I have to start 38th, right? So you get all those placement points. So mm-hmm. interesting range from 10K on up. Some dominators, some, um, uh, you know, Kyle Larson starting 11th and then obviously Chase Elliott. What are you doing with this range? What are you doing with HMS? Where is your head at with Toyota? Give me some thoughts. So I think first and foremost, we got to start with the most expensive guy, and that's Kyle Larson. And the fact that this is the first time he did not crack the final round of qualifying since joining HMS back in 2021. As a matter of fact, it was the spring race in Kansas that year was the last time he didn't make the final round of qualifying where he went off 32nd, finishing 19th. Since that time, it's been a first, a third, a seventh, a second, a second, and a fourth. So this is the first time he's going to have to actually work through some semblance of traffic, you know, early on in this race. So he doesn't have the built-in track position. And, you know, we really didn't get to see him throw down a lot of laps because outside of Alex Bowman and William Byron, Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson, they pit early. Elliott pit because he had a clear engine issue. And then Kyle Larson, he was making some adjustments for quite some time during the practice session, pitting after, uh, I believe it was only like 11 laps or something I, I wrote down. So, you know, I, I don't really know what to make of what we saw in practice there. And then the fact that he didn't have the greatest short run speed in qualifying, you know, obviously it's not worrisome because this is starting 11th is not a spot where I don't think he can win from, but 
it's not the usual Kyle Larson effort here in Kansas. So did HMS miss the setup? Did they bring crappy engines to Kansas? Did they just well, I don't have think a you weird can say that because, because Bowman and Byron, they were very quick. You know, so I, I mean, so Byron did pit early. He, I, I believe Byron pit around the same time that Larson did. And then Bowman's the only one that stayed out the whole time, which I mean, surprise, surprise. He's kind of on the up and up. Uh, as we're getting into the playoffs and we saw it last week where, I mean, he floundered a little bit late, stressful with that top 10 play we had, but yeah, but Bowman's looking really strong right now. Who knows? Maybe he's got the best HMS car this week. I, I doubt it. It's probably going to be Larson again, but yeah, Larson's probably going to be the most popular guy on the slate. I mean, everybody just assumes he's going to win. He's the betting favorite post post practice and qualifying. And for some damn reason, he actually got shorter which makes zero sense to me. And he didn't put it on the pole. He didn't even make the final round and he still Chris gets is just out there pounding the pounding the <laughs> bet button. Uh, I will tell you, Larson is actually the uh, looking at projections, the third most rostered driver. So I'll let you guess who number one and number two are, but um, well, I was just going to say, popular. I think it's, teammate Chase Elliott. it's probably going to be number one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, very it, much so. Yeah, he's he he's an auto filler. Um, what about the Toyotas? Obviously, Bell looks like he has a rocket ship. Yep. Reddick didn't look amazing in practice, but twenty three eleven missed the setup. Yeah, and they I, were able know. to qualify and start in on the second row. Yep. Um, Denny was Denny. I mean, are are you worried about any of the Toyotas? So, uh, obviously I'll, I go more into this. It, oh, well, just a little preview there, uh, in the newsletter, I, I went in a little bit more in depth with Denny here, but he never practices or qualifies well at Kansas. So you cannot take what he does on Saturday or the day before the race with much, you know, look ahead to the actual race at, at Kansas. The, yeah. You know, the fact that he actually did qualify inside the top 10, I think is a good omen for his propositions here considering the last time he started in this spot he won the race and so you know denny's a guy for me if i'm going to get off of larson I, i'm going to want to play hamlin because i think he offers the same ceiling we've seen him battle up front at kansas he actually has the best average finishing position here at kansas among him and larson and throughout the entire cup series it's not it's not larson in the gen 7 era it's actually denny despite his disadvantage of qualifying. So the fact that he has a better starting position than he usually does. And he's starting ahead of Kyle Larson for me tells says that he's going to have a tremendous car. He already said on his podcast to no more effing around. Like they are yeah. going for it early right now because they do not want to be in the situation they were in last round, having to perform at an elite level in the final race of a playoff round. Totally, totally agree. Let's jump into the next range where we have some interesting names to dissect. Ryan Blaney starting 7th at 9,800. William Byron starting 6th at 97. The 19, Martin Truex starting 19th at 9,500. Logano starting 5th at 93. Tyrone Gibbs starting 2nd at 92. And Bubba, even though 2311 was, like you mentioned, not great and might have kind of missed their uh, setup. Yeah. Qualified 13th. Looks pretty decent. Where's your head going for this range? Yeah, I obviously I'm excited about Ryan Blaney and what could be, but you know, we've seen this a couple of times this year where he's looked like the best car in practice and it didn't come to fruition during the race. And I also think it's important to remember that during the springtime. William Byron had the best car in practice and then was crap in the race. And so, you know, I, obviously you can't, I don't think the two correlate perfectly because it's a different time of day. The track conditions are going to be different. You had another full race happen post practice and qualifying with Xfinity laying down rubber there. So, you know, it, it's going to be slightly different there. Um, you know, I, I like Blaney. I like Byron. It's just hard when they're starting right around Denny and Kyle Larson. I, I mean, Larson and Denny, 
they're probably better than those two guys and you're getting more placements. So it'd be hard to pivot off of them and go with either of these two guys when there's also value a little bit further down the board. Yeah, I'm just hoping Blaney gets to run more than a lap or two before he has to get uh, wrecked <laughs> by somebody. Yeah, it's very true. Um, I'm out on Truex. I think he has quit. I think he's ready for his retirement. Um, but I know there's some optimism among the NASCAR community. Where do you fall in the situation? Honestly, he's in a void for me. I just, I think last week was more telling when, even though he had the penalty, I don't even know if he was really pushing late. I obviously passing was extremely difficult, but I mean, he could have forced the issue and spun somebody and brought a caution out and then recreated his own track position. But I just don't think he wants to do that. And this is his worst starting position in the next gen era here at Kansas. And, you know, despite tremendous results here in the past, like you said, I, his head is somewhere else. He's not racing for anything right now. And so I just can't really get behind him when he's starting mid pack. And there's other guys too, that I think have just as good at cars and are racing for much more than somebody who already has one foot out the door. Yeah. Let's dive into the eight case. Kyle Bush starting third. Speaking of a guy, I'm just completely out on. Yeah. We'll see if he shows up on Sunday, but um, him starting third is nice for me. In theory, uh, my ability gets some good numbers and matchups and stuff. Busher starting 25th and Brad Keselowski starting 26th at 85 and 83. Briscoe starting 9th. Bowman finished starting 12th. What are you doing with RFK? Well, is anybody surprised that they qualified like shit? I mean, this is the norm for that team. It, they They never show speed on Saturday or the day before the race, they hardly ever put it up near the front to begin a race. And so this is kind of what I expected. And the fact that both of them are out of the playoffs now, I think as a team, as a collective, they can start looking for trophies and also how to improve at tracks where they maybe weren't the greatest earlier in the year. And I think the best idea of that is like Brad Keselowski. He didn't have the best result here in the spring, but if we know anything about both of these guys is that if we get long green runs, long green flag runs, my expectation and for most most people's expectations should be that these cars are going to be fast. And that was shown in practice when both of these guys had tremendous long run speed with limited fall off as we got past about the 30 lap mark or so, which obviously we're going to get runs way longer than that. And yeah. you know, if they can make up the track position early, something that they've both been able to do and they're very skilled at, they could be running inside the top 10 before you know it, and then they're battling for top fives. Yeah, they've both shown the ability to get track position and keep it, um, and if they get speed at the end of the race, it could be really, really nice. I think they're both incredibly compelling given where they're starting and their cost. Bowman, 12th. We are both, I think, excited about him. Not sure, like, ultimate seeing um, if he is really a race winner. <laughs> but the last two years, he's been pretty dang good here. He's performed well. He has moved forward every time. He doesn't usually start this far forward. So I'm a little concerned that maybe he's closer to a ceiling than maybe people want to admit. But at 8K, starting 12th, I think is going to be a really compelling or tournament lineups given where he's starting, what he's costing and kind of what the guys around him look like, like either going up to one of the RFK guys or dropping down to, you know, save a few hundred dollars could be very easy for majority of the field. So if you want to be a little bit different, if you believe HMS it will be fine on Sunday, I think he makes for a phenomenal target. Yeah. And, you know, I think Bowman, he kind of flies under the radar here at Kansas amongst the HMS guys, but he only has one finish worse than 11th since, or two finishes worse than 11th since the beginning of 2018 when he joined Hendrick full time at Kansas. And I, I mean, obviously, that doesn't give you a ceiling play for this guy, yeah. but he was fast in practice. He was fast in qualifying. And we've seen HMS pop at one and a halfs, 
you know, another place where Bowman has kind of surprised in the past is Las Vegas, which is a similar track, a little bit, a little bit less tire wear. So you don't have to worry about that type of stuff, but you know, Bowman has shown more speed of late than he did early or mid season. And so I, to your point, I think he could go less roster than what he probably should. And if yep. you're trying to deviate in tournament, I think he's a, a great play. Yeah. And he finished seventh here in the spring. He was 10th here last year and he was fourth here two years ago when he led 107 laps. So he's shown the ability to get out front, be competitive, be a top five car. I think that's well within his range of outcomes this week and um, makes him somebody that I think has a little more ceiling than maybe people want to give him credit for. Uh, let's keep it rolling as we dive into the 7K range where we have Ross Chastain, Austin Sindrick, Daniel Suarez, Noah Gregson, Michael McDowell rounding out uh, an even 7K. Um, a lot more back markers in this range, you know, kind of that like high teens, low 20s. Um, good filler, reasonably affordable pricing. Who's the most compelling for you from this range? Uh, I it's probably going to be one of the, the second cheapest guys, and that's going to be Noah Gregson. I I wasn't high on him coming into the week, but what I saw in practice was a a decent long run car. He's only seventy two hundred. Uh, he finished tenth here in the spring, I believe it was, or right around there. So you know, clearly he's got the history. He was good in Vegas earlier in the spring too, and then you know with with SHR going away, there's a little worry that these guys might be somewhere else, but we haven't really seen that fall off that I kind of expected from that entire garage. And so, you know, I think Gregson makes for a, a fun play. And then, look, it, I don't think Suarez is going to be in the top 10 by the end of the race. So I think he's in a void. And then Chastain, too. I, I liked him pre week for a possible top 10. This is worst, worst starting position at Kansas in quite some time and at a one and a half for that matter this year. So I'm kind of worried about that team not being in the playoffs and all their resources going towards the 99 right now. So, you know, there's a little void. And then how do you trust Austin Cedric? I, like he could or couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like a lot of question marks. Don't love track house. Don't love Cedric. I'm in on Gregson. and I think he makes a lot of sense. I know there was some optimism about him pre-practice yeah. and qualifying. There were some good top 10 numbers floating around that some people got on. Um, they're still around if you can look for them. Uh, depends on your book, obviously, but um, don't hate, you know, three to three, like how, you know, almost four to one on him for a top 10. I think that's well within range. That means 7,200 for a guy who could finish in the top 10. Makes some sense. And, you know, we liked uh, Gregson early in the year. We thought mile and a half were a great place for him. SHR yeah. kind of shit the bed for a while, but he's <laughs> come back. He looked good in practice. And if he has the long run speed and shows up, um, could be a nice value on Sunday. So I don't hate that call at all. 6K, Josh Berry starting 29th, Stenhouse 18th, host of our 14th, Austin Dillon 22nd, Justin Haley in the 7 Spire, no, yes, no, so he's in the Spire, yes, yes. and then Corey LaJoy is in the Rick Ware Racing, uh, Eric Jones 16th, uh, Ryan Priest 37th, Todd Gillen 33rd, um, kind of disgusting don't really love anybody. Josh Berry, I could squint and see it, especially given where he's starting. I don't know that I want any part of Stenhouse or Hosevar. I was try I was telling you before we talked where we were uh recording that I was trying to convince myself that Austin Dillon was an interesting play. But like RCR in just the last couple of years at this track, like have not been the same as like that kind of run where he was just getting like top 10 ish finishes. Justin Haley in a new in. I know it's an old car, but a new car like I don't I, I mean, Eric Jones, 6300 is starting 16th. Like I like him as a potential top 
ten twelve guy. So yeah. maybe he's fine at sixty three hundred, but like you're really having to do some mental math with a lot of these guys to consider <laughs> them this week. Yeah, I I mean it, what's interesting about this range is that I think the guy with the highest ceiling is the one that has the most variance for me, and that's gonna be Carson Hosevar starting 14th. Uh, of late, he's been extremely fast at numerous types of tracks. Yeah. And, you know, starting 14th, he already has that built-in track position. And he could just, if he can just maintain that throughout the race, who who knows? Maybe he's top seven come yeah. the end of the day. But within that realm, within those realms of possibilities is also a, a as uh, our buddy Chris Wormy says, a DFL where he's the first guy wrecked out because he's trying to rip the wall too early and he gets loose and he takes out a right rear toe link. So, you know, I, I don't know how you can play him based on where he's starting. And yeah. then the rest of the guys too, I just don't know where they're going to go. Like Josh Berry, for instance, his practice was shit. And so like what top 20, maybe for him, you're, you're hoping for, but yeah. I don't even know if that's possible. Yeah. Like host of our, like he's had some nice performances, but, those are starting 37th, 32nd, 29th. Exactly. So we start a little bit better. He's gone backwards and not been super great for DraftKings. So there is, I mean, maybe he does a fire keepers and starts kind of where he finishes where he starts and who knows. But yeah, he's, I don't know. He's probably a better bet where if you get paid out on him, I'm happy to do it. If you really want to get weird on the tournament lineup and he's going to be the one piece you kind of pivot to, whatever. But I'd much, I'd go to Jones two spots back, save a couple hundred bucks, and I feel much oh, better about his, yeah. his potential, especially his floor. Um, and I think he has just as much upside. Well, and I also think, too, to, to that point, Eric Jones, maybe prior to Legacy's like transition and all that stuff, when you go back to comp tracks, um, our buddy, Ryan over at iFantasy Race, he talks about how Kansas is mini Michigan. Yep. And what is one of Eric Jones's best tracks? Michigan. Michigan. And so, you know, if you're looking at good correlation there, you would think that this would be a nice spot for Eric Jones to compete. And I think it's also important to remember about Legacy is that along with 2311, as they were opening up their airspeed, Legacy was transitioning into airspeed because that's where they do their training now. Like they they use their facilities. And so they were also going through the, all that big old move. And now we're we're a month, maybe six weeks or so, maybe two months outside of them making the move and starting to train there. And you're starting to see both of them, or at least Jones, for that matter, perform a little bit better. And, you know, I if he's going to start picking it up, I think now would be a good time. But again, starting 16th, he can go one way or the other and then you'd be effed. Yeah, he's got a lot of Ricky Bobby to him where he wants to go fast. Uh, there might be a cougar in the car, but that's OK. Uh, what about the 5k range? Jimmy Johnson, Corey LaJoy, John Hunter, Harrison Burton, Zane Smith, Daniel Hemrick, Ty Dillon, Kaz Grala, JJ Yaley. I mean, if we thought 6k was disgusting, 5k is even worse. I, I, LaJoy, maybe John Hunter. That's kind of it for me. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not big on really either one of them. I don't really, I don't know. I, I, I'm a, I'm kind of like personally partial to to the Kaz man. Um, you know, we've seen Cody Ware run at Kansas a couple of times in the next gen era, and he has thirtieth or better results there. And so, if Kaz at fifty one hundred dollars can just keep the tires on it yeah. and run you know, finish five laps down, but finish 28th. I, I think we're, you're good at, with that result, you know? So, and then it, yeah. it opens up the possibility to front load this thing, which I think is probably going to be the way you're going to have to build a lineup here because you're going to uh, look either Kyle Larson or Denny Hamlin are going to be up front at some point, or maybe at the end, I don't think there's a world where both of those guys wreck each other out until extremely late. And by then they would have accumulated so many dominator points that if you didn't roster one of them, you were completely screwed. So yeah. you're going to need to fit one or maybe both into a lineup. Well, let's do it. Let's fit one or maybe both into our lineup. I will give you the T and you can put any driver, any price uh, into our lineup. 
Denny. Dennis Hamlin, huh? <sighs> Chase. Ugh. I mean, you you have to. <laughs> it's, yeah, we're not going to do it in every lineup, but a guy starting thirty eighth. I know he's expensive, but even if yeah. he's like a top ten car, I think it's gonna be hard to avoid. Look, you're gonna see this on our betting cards from earlier this week, and I will talk about how excited I am about this tomorrow. So we're gonna need an early dominator, like a quick dominator. We're going to pivot off of Christopher Bell. Give me Ty Gibbs starting right beside him. Uh, the kid has nothing to lose, which obviously maybe he's the Ricky Bobby and he's wrecking early, but he is going for a win. There's no worry about points. There's no worry about playoffs. None of that matters anymore. Yeah. I'm really hoping we both end up with couches. We'll see if that actually comes to fruition. Um... Who is your favorite RFK, Busher or Keselowski? Uh, I like I like Keselowski. Let's do Kesman, yeah. not the Kazman, but the Kesman. Let's see if we can make it work. It might be a little too aggressive. Uh, I mean, we could do the Kesman and the Kazman. <laughs> Let's do it. I love that Kez and Kaz. And then it gets us to sixty four hundred, so we could do Eric Jones. I mean, at that point, you're you're playing for a, a ceiling play, which I don't hate that. The other thing is we take out Kozlowski, and that gets us. We could like do like a, a Gregson, and like I don't we feel do much like... better about that. So I think I'd rather just get gross with like a Jones, and then yeah. go get Kozlowski. Yeah. Cool. Did it. Million millionaires. Let's go. <laughs> uh let's create a lineup. I was building my cash shells earlier. Should we just do Larson in this one? Yeah, this one's gotta be Larson. Okay. Um I mean if you want to get really gross, we can just do Larson and Christopher Bell, who Yeah, I don't think that's gross at all. I think that's awesome. Part. Yeah, but I mean, it puts us at a salary That's disadvantage. Like, put us in a corner. Put us in a corner. Um, La Joy. Taking us out quickly. Yeah. All right. Let's do Graxon here in this spot. Okay. Uh, 72. Gives us 76. So we could do some disgusting. We could go for a look, couple. Look, it, if there's one guy in the Cup Series who has routinely gotten results that aren't necessarily earned, it, that's going to be Daniel Hemrick. Starting 30th, wow. 5,300. He's going to save us a ton of salary. That allows us to live to Chase Elliott. Boom. I was just going to say, and then you just put Chase in there and you have the built in placement differential. Like, yeah, I let. I, it's a little scary going with so many squirrels, but I think it's fun. Yeah. All right, third and final lineup. I think we. I think we avoid. Boom. Well, uh, we avoid Larson and Hamlin, maybe even Elliot. I don't know if that's stupid but I think we make one lineup without Chase because what if I obviously major hypothetical here what if the engine problems I don't think it's that hypothetical at all I think there's a real, real world where he's just like annoyed all day and we're interviewing him at lap 135 because they just couldn't get the car together and he parked it and I think that's very real I'm, I like I said, I, I have some exposure to him on the betting card. I think he makes sense given his talent and stuff, but 
like, would it shock me if or like, you know, whoever's interviewing him and he's like, yeah, the car just didn't have it. The engine was never good. And uh, we just couldn't get it. It was a frustrating weekend for sure, but we move on and keep going. And uh, I mean, I could totally picture that. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, we've seen it before where just one weekend, somebody's somebody's weekend yeah. is just absolute trash. All right. Um, I'm going to put in Alex Bowman because I don't think we played him yet and I want to get some exposure to him. All right. All right. I like that. I like that. <sighs> Man. Man, this week is so hard because I feel like the plays are funneled into a, there's a handful of guys. Yeah. And we don't have to like if it puts us too far off of the optimal and it puts us in a position that is just like unnecessary to get to. Like right. we definitely can fix one of the guys, but put uh, let's build a lineup with both Kyle Larson and Denny Hamlin. Oh my god. We went from using neither of them to using both. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I mean, think, these two guys are the premier no, drivers. I, I think it makes camp. a lot of sense. I think you expect them to get to the front early. And exactly. Just They're going to be battling it out. They're going to be jousting up front and wind up wrecking. And then Alex Bowman will be sitting right there in third place yeah. to win. Eric, as they, as they wreck Jones, welcome to the lineup. Oh, I love it. And then we either get super gross or we just go with a couple 6K guys. Like, um... Well, so what can we do if we if we go cheap as shit? Just, uh, I mean, I don't like I don't like JJ Yaley one bit, but let's go with Kaz. That gets us to eighty one hundred, and that gets us to uh, Prisco, yeah. Chastain, Cindric, Gragson Gregson again. Yeah, I mean, if we do Gregson, what if you do if you get rid of Jones? Get rid of Jones, and we go Kaz, man. That gets us to 7,200. And so that gets uh, us to like McDowell, Barry. I mean, I would be okay with Barry. Yeah, I don't hate I don't it. I love it. It's just like. I don't know. Okay, well, what if you got rid of. What if you get rid of Gragson and Barry? That gets us And then to... we go a, another squirrel, just another. Okay. Like maybe this is a spot again for uh shit, either just throw Ty Dillon or Daniel Hemrick in there and hope they can just run the entire race. I mean, what about Zane Smith? Okay. So I think I think if we're gonna go squirrel, I either want to do LaJoy or I want to do Hemrick. So if we do Hemrick. I know it's gross, but we're also getting in Larson and Hamlin. We could also and get Bowman. rid of Bowman, who yeah, but like, no, Bowman Bowman's a good play though. Like he's going to be a top ten car. I, it, outside of him wrecking, and that gets if we go if we go Growla and him wreck, then we can get to like one of the RFK guys or Bubba. It doesn't really quite get us. I mean, if you got rid of Hemrick and you put JJ Yaley, we could put Gibbs in there. <laughs> yeah. Do you like that better than the only thing is I could I could realistically see JJ Yaley being the first guy retired because I'm pretty sure he's he's driving the New York Racing 44. So like I didn't even pay attention to his practice or qualifying because he's he's basically the 66 this week to me. Oh wow, you took okay, so we don't have I'm just checking it. things out to get a feel for what we might be able to do if we feel better about it. We what do, if we do both both RFK guys? Well, so I'm kind of what I'm where I'm getting, and that gives us um let's see. I was hoping it would get us to fifty seven. It does not. So my only So my only worry about that is doing a quick, quick reconnaissance here. 
Oh my gosh, of course they don't list that, but um when you go back to the previous fall Kansas races, I want to say like 80% of the finishers inside the top 10, this is the next gen era, were all playoff drivers. Yeah. And so by putting in both RFK guys, you're really running the risk or you're like, you're really ro- rolling the dice that they are the essentially the two non-playoff guys that are going to find their way up there. Because I, I just don't see that the playoff guys falling backwards here because they're going to do everything in their power to wind up with a good result. Ooh, I like that. It's a little bit of deviance. All right. I mean, we're here to we're here to get different and win all the money. So, how do you feel about that? I think we got three potential race winners who could all finish inside the top five, potentially one, two, three. I mean, obviously you're taking out uh, Byron and Bell and Gibbs, but and then if Grala can. It, if Grala could luck into a top 28, I think you're, you're great. And then LaJoy a top 20 and Barry, if he can top 20 as well. I... The other thing is we could do, I don't know. I think that's the play. Josh Barry kind of sucks, but also. Well, okay. So, I, I almost feel like the difference between Eric Jones and Josh Berry, uh, yes, you're you're gaining the potential for 13 different placement points, but who has a higher ceiling? And to me, it's not even a question. It's Eric Jones. And I can see Eric Jones finishing inside the top 10 much easier than I can see Josh Berry finishing inside the top 20. Yeah. For that but then we have to go like Priest or Gelland or – I guess we could just do LaJoy. LaJoy again, because if he gets... I I could see him getting top 20. I mean, Justin Haley rode around in the RWR I like card. This. I like this. This is fun. And I think it's unique enough with, with Blaney and having the double hammers. I don't think there's going to be a lot of people building Larson Hamlin uh, lineups. I think they'll do one and then go down. Just out of curiosity. What's up? I'm pretty sure we could have taken Blaney out and put in Bell in and just had Bell, Larson, Hamlin. Oof. <laughs> uh, where is that lineup? Here. Oh, we can. I mean, you're you're probably getting the vast majority of stage one laps led out of Christopher Bell there. I think that's probably better, especially if he has the rocket ship we think he can have. And he's he's started up front. This is three consecutive times now he started at started Kansas on the pole. I yeah. eventually it's gonna come to a better finishing result, which I mean I think it's like sixth is low the last yeah, two times. Those, so. those three guys could lead like eighty five percent of the laps. Exactly. I like that. Good call. All right. Well, we did it, Brian. We did it. We have Larson across the board, though. So RIP Kyle Larson. <laughs> um, a couple Christopher Bells. We did have Bowman in the lineup, so that's good. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy with it. Okay. Well, I mean, it, to me, it just says that Eric Jones is going to be the first guy out. He's going to yeah, wreck. We only have him in two of the three, and we actually had a lineup that was very similar with that Josh Berry one that we ended up pivoting off of. True. So I'm glad we did that too. So I will enter those into contests. I promise. Let's look at the betting card. Let's talk about what we're doing and let's get into it. Uh, I have Tyrone Gibbs at 25 from pre. I'm very happy with that. I have Hamlin over Larson. I have Bubba over KFB. I have Busher over Truex, which I don't know how I feel about that. And then Jones over Haley, which is completely flipped. I'm very happy about that. We'll talk about it, but I added Chris Bell at 850. It's a boost, so I only added one unit there. And then I found him in a fan duel for another eight. Uh, you have Gibbs and Chastain, you have Bubba in a group, you have Hamlin over Larson, Wallace over Bush, Reddick over Larson, Jones over Haley, 
Good point on the bell. That yeah, Gibbs top ten, Chastain top ten, because yeah. it's a hundred dollar max, and like I don't know, I feel weird. I don't want to like find fake numbers where you can't put down. Uh, I mean, that's essentially like a unit. Yeah, exactly. Bucks. That's kind of yeah. where my head was at. Yeah, yeah, that's a good call. Uh, so let's talk about the odds. Dennis, oh wait, no, Kyle Larson is your favorite, despite not looking incredible in practice and not finishing inside the top 10 and qualifying. Then Hamlin, then Byron, then Reddick, then Bell at eight, which I love that number. I think Christopher Bell has a really good chance at winning. I think he's got a rocket ship. Um, I'm surprised he's sitting there. I know our favorite offshore. I know he was like 13 or 12. A lot of places I wanted to get some of that. Our favorite offshore kind of just had him short and he stayed short. I'm sure Brian got great numbers somewhere because he's um, good like that. But uh, yeah. Oh, geez. yeah, I got I, I jumped on the 13. Uh, our, our offshore has him at 550. Oh, uh, yikes. I won't. I will not have any Christopher Bell this week. Um, then we get into double digits. I can pull up Caesars. It's a lot of the same: Larson, Hamlin, Bell, Reddick, Byron, and then you get into double digits. What is your thoughts on kind of these prices? Are you buying any of these guys at? You know, inside ten to one. If so, who are you buying? So I, I think Christopher Bell at eight to one is still an absolute buy right now. Yeah. It, we've seen him before, where when he fires off like this, he he's going to be competitive. He's going to be a contender for the race win. And outside of you know bullshit happening on pit road or somebody else taking him out, he he's going to be there or be near there come the end of the race. So it, when you can get a car, or po- quite possibly the best car at a number like this, when he inexplicably is not near the top two guys, I, you, you got to fire on it. I mean, it's not like he's been bad no. at Kansas. It, you know, he's been good. It's just stuff just hasn't, you, the story hasn't been told where he was up front at the end. And w- when you go back to the spring too, like Kyle Larson had no business winning that race. He wasn't even near the front. It wasn't until the KFB spin that kind of jumbled up the field and even allowed him to get up there. So I'm still kind of baffled by the fact that he reopened at a little bit of a shorter favorite in some places than he did pre-practice when we didn't really even get to see him put together a long run. And we didn't get them. We didn't get any indication of he liked his car, which normally when he says that, yeah, you want to fire on him, but I can't really get to Larson at four and Denny, like, you know, I talked him up during the DFS segment, but like he's been, he's been good. He hasn't been great in the playoffs. And, you know, Christopher Bell is in the same equipment and we've seen it before where he's actually been faster than his teammates. So yeah, fire on that eight, uh, add that if you don't have access to Caesars or you're, or you already exhausted that one unit, uh, boosted play there, you know, if you want to get more exposure to him, I would definitely advocate for betting that number. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm curious to see what Wormy says about him and I want to pick his brain about how to get exposure when all I can get is a garbage number. Um, the next range I think is where things get interesting. I'm really tempted to add Blaney at 12. I was able to grab 16 at our favorite offshore. I was very excited about that. You're 12 welcome. is, I don't know. Is it, is it, is it, is it good Ford enough? Ford stuck at Kansas in the Gen 7. So it, I don't know if you can get there at 12 with Blaney. I just don't really see it. Uh, I think the top finishing Ford, they've only been inside the top five like twice in the next gen era, I believe it is, or something like that. So, you know, this is a sh- this is an HMS JGR track, which, I mean, you could say that about every friggin' track here, but you know, Blaney looked great. And so if you don't have any exposure to him, I don't hate adding him on an outright as like a safety net in case, you know, you got a little Larson or Denny and Christopher Bell. I I don't mind getting there, but you know, it's just going to be hard 
for him to do that when Ford just hasn't necessarily been great at this track. Yeah. What about Gibbs at 14? Like, I know we got much longer numbers. Is it crazy to go back to him? If you don't have exposure, would you be willing to buy at 14? What's your thoughts there? Because obviously like him, but he's never won a race. And (laughs) the price is right. He looked good in practice. He qualified strong. But he's never won a race. And... uh, I think it depends on how much you value current form versus historical data. Because Gibbs' finishes here leave a lot to be desired. I think his average finish is outside the top 25 at Kansas. Um, In the springtime, you know, he wound up with a bad result. But if you're not looking deeper than just the finishing numbers, you're missing the fact that Ty Gibbs was a top five car the entirety of the first 66%, 70% of the race here in the spring. And then his car just shut off and he must've had an issue and he, he sank like a rock and yeah. Yeah. He's finished 32nd, 14th, 34th and 34th, but two of those are accidents Mm -hmm. and one of them (coughs) He was uh, the last time we were here, which is a spring. He was sixth after stage one, sixth after stage two, um, and finished 32nd. Yeah. And the thing though is, like, I've been hearkening on this since the beginning of the week. As soon as odds dropped, he was my, he was my favorite number simply for the fact that he's basically had a monkey lifted off his back. And this could be his Steve Young moment where now that the pressure is off of him, He can just go out and do what he's been doing his entire career, and that's win races. He doesn't have to worry about stage points. He doesn't have to worry about strategy. Everything is going to be going out here to put the pedal to the metal and go for a win. And, you know, at 14 to 1, it's a little short for somebody that's never won a race, but he's in the equipment. That's the thing. He's, He's in the Toyota equipment that has been incredible here at Kansas. And if if you're not going to believe the practice that and qualifying that he put together, then I don't know when you're finally going to be on board for yeah. Gibbs to be a potential race winner. And I also think this is a great opportunity to hedge off of your under half a race win with Gibbs, because this is quite possibly his best opportunity of the year when you account for the stressors that have been removed. Yeah. Yeah. I think he makes sense. Looking at his total speed rankings over on iFantasy Race, he was fourth in the first 67 laps. He was sixth in the next 67, and then he went down to 14th and 22nd. Was yeah, the, a, car, the car took a dump. <laughs> yeah. But he was still a top 10 car in average speed ranking. Everybody else who finished in the top 10 was inside the top eight except for him and Ross Chastain, who both they both completely fell off. So that makes sense. Um, what about beyond there? Chase Bowman, and you get in the 20s. You got Logano. I'm not touching Truex or Kyle Bush if you want 22. Be my I've guess. I've seen Bush at 25. I don't, I don't, would you rather that? bet Truex or Kyle Bush? I think it. Honestly, I'd probably rather bet Kyle Bush at this point because Bush still has years or at least a year to come. So, I mean, he still wants to maintain the competitiveness going into next season. Whereas what is what is Martin Truex Jr. racing for outside of just one more win? I mean, Bush has the longest standing streak of consecutive seasons with a victory still on the yeah. line here. So, And um, going back to his post-practice interview, he was being talked. They were asking him about his best opportunities to win. And he said that he thinks that here, Talladega and then uh, Las Vegas, when we go there a little bit later in October are probably his last three chances to get a win. And his practice session sucked. He was atrocious during practice, but he said it in that interview, they took a wild swing at things and lo and behold, they had short run speed. So who the hell knows? I, 
I'm not going to have any action on him. Like I'll be naked on Kyle Bush. Yeah. And hey, whatever I don't know. Gets your, whatever gets your jollies off, Brian. Yeah. Just, I'll just uh, pray that he does not hurt me. At the he sport. was, he started fifth and finished eighth here in the spring. He was started 35th and was seventh here last year in this race. Uh, he was, he's done well in the spring of May, 2022. And then kind of the, that, that fall. And then that next spring, he was kind of underwhelming, but, um, he's had good results here. This is a good track for him. If you're buying the Kyle Bush is going to get a win before the end of the year, this might be a good place to jump in. And I think you need to be North of 20. And ideally, I think, like, is there a 25 or even longer out there? Yeah, I think he's 25 at MGM. Let's uh, see. Right now. Uh, yeah. Or... Yeah, he's still 25 at MGM. Yeah, I guess that's fine. I don't and also, it. too, um, just one, mother, one more little tidbit to keep in mind here. This, we've had nine consecutive winners here at Kansas started inside the top 10, so. The fact that he qualified where he did is a good omen potentially for him but maybe even just getting a race win. I mean, it puts positivity in his corner for a potential win here. Yeah. Can Ross win? No. I don't think they got the guy. The, the only way Chastain wins is if he gets a caution at the correct time late in the race and he's up front and we all know he's extremely hard to pass. Yeah. And like, I think, I think they will be... In a short run stint, like a restart situation, I think Chastain could potentially beat other drivers because he is so difficult to pass. But it's just him getting to that, getting that track position is going to be so difficult based on the practice that I saw that I have zero interest in betting him now post practice yeah, in any market. 50 and he's like 35 ish everywhere. So, you know me, I like playing numbers. Anybody beyond Ross that you're even considering taking a lottery ticket with? Eric Jones, 150. Look, I don't hate... Uh, I've seen other people talk about this. So, Gragson at 90 and Jones at 150. I mean, we're talking very small plays here. Maybe yeah. just enough to cover your like other actual... Actual outrights on guys that you think you can are get right. 125 on Greg's in it, uh, Caesars. Like, I don't hate those because Gregson looks looks sporty late in a run. Like, obviously, we we would need a long green flag run to end this race, and him to have established some track position late yeah. for this to happen. He'd probably need some chaos up front, but we've seen crazier shit. Yeah. All right, Brian. It was good to catch up. It was good to talk the race. It was good to build some DraftKings lineups. Uh, as I mentioned, we're going to go finish up our newsletter, aoppodcast.substack.com, aoppodcast.substack.com. The link is down in the description. We put that out every race day uh, with DraftKings thoughts, with betting thoughts, with our full betting card, with... Um, a variety of things. So make sure you subscribe to that. It's completely free. Check that out. We're going to go get that done. We're going to go figure out our full betting card for the rest of the bet. So make sure you check that out so you can see what our full card looks like. Feel free to leave comments, leave thoughts on bets you found. Have you have any questions? You can also hit us up on Twitter. For Brian Twining, I'm Kyle Robert. Enjoy the rest of your day. Let's cash some tickets. Let's win some money on DraftKings and let's all come back next week to re recap all that was Kansas as well as and get ready for the rest of victory. Get rid of the get ready for the rest of round two of the NASCAR Cup playoffs. You guys have a good one and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Yeah.